This week, we continue our journey through Alaska as we head to the Homer Spit. Homer is the halibut fishing capital of the world. Plus, glamping has been a trend that's really taken off in the camping industry. We've got some of the top, most interesting glamping resorts across the country. All that and more. This is RV Miles. Welcome to episode number 313 of RV Miles. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two RVers who, along with our three boys, have been crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip since 2016. Here at RV Miles, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from industry news to national parks and a whole lot more. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We are excited to continue our journey through Alaska, really kind of our second to last major destination in alaska i think this is the second to last episode on this entire series yeah we're getting towards the end here um which is uh and it's it's taken us long enough hasn't it and it's been a lot of fun to remember all this stuff though and and to just sort of go through all the photos and memories and and and, uh and relive it sort of uh so we're excited to share with you a little bit about the the town of homer alaska on this episode. But first, uh, our friends over at The Dirt. The Dirt is a a camping website that has reservations, but all sorts of information on camping as well. And they do all sorts of great surveys and roundups. And this recent article they just put out is their 2024 Glampy Award. So it's an award that they've been giving out for the last couple of years now that is recognizing the top glamping destinations across America. And if you don't know what glamping is, it's essentially... Then where have you been for the last, like, <laughs> six <it's>, years? <laughs> it's... You know, a lot of people will call RVing glamping. Uh, the the term glamping really has come to mean in the camping industry as sort of high-end tent camping or sort of unique type of accommodation. Yeah, so like, I think, you know, covered wagons yeah. and dome tents. Or and a just, caboose of a train or something yes. like that. Yeah. It's, All of which are included in this award. <laughs> it's that side, <laughs> that type of stuff. So the dirt says that 26% of private camping properties now contain glamping. They now offer glamping and that number is rising. And we've seen all kinds of places that are only glamping resorts. In fact, when I just left Jackson, Wyoming, outside of the the ski resort, they have a, there's a glamping resort there with sort of like the big geodesic dome tents with like one side clear looking at the mountain and and all that sort of stuff. Do you want to glamp? I would. It's expensive. It's very expensive. <laughs> and sometimes I'm just like, well, do, like if it contains a bathroom, okay. Well, but if and- I'm paying that kind of cost to like walk outside to the bathroom, I don't know. In a lot of these on this Glampy Award, yeah. they don't have bathrooms in them. Yeah, I mean, They have outhouses. Of course, if they're in amazing locations, but I've got an RV for that. This is true. <laughs> I mean, one of the... <laughs> I do have an RV and it has a bathroom, but one of these is in located in Wisconsin yeah. that won one of the awards, right? And it's just a little... A line with an outhouse. And this is not like I live in the Midwest. This is not shade on Wisconsin, but for that cost, I, like, I would always be sort of balancing off with what I stay in a hotel instead. Yes. And, and you know, in having all the services of a hotel. And I know a lot of people just despise hotels, but I, I don't think this is that much different. So the things you don't like about a hotel, like sharing a bed that somebody else has used and all that sort of stuff. You're still getting with that type, this type of experience. But I think, I think really what these things come down to is how the places are run, because I think it really comes down to the service and the treatments. I think a lot of these places are trying to give you a a really unique, interesting experience. So let's run off a couple examples of these. Okay. Well, I feel like I have to talk about this one in Wisconsin because I was just kind of throwing a little bit of shade at it. So this is from, it's called Sailor Springs Glamping. And there's only three on property. They're going to run in price from $110 to $160 a night. Well, that's not bad. It's not bad. It is, you know, not going to be the West if, if we move to more, you know, I guess prime real estate locations. It's going to get a little bit more expensive, but uh, it is by Lake Superior 
is only a mile downstream from this creek. I mean, that's very beautiful, especially in the spring and fall. I'm not so sure that this is somewhere that I would want to be in July or August, to be honest. Like that's a hundred percent why if I'm going to travel like this and travel through the Midwest or the South, I'm going to want something with air conditioning. It's not the heat. It's the oppressive humidity but, every single time. But they do have wood stoves in these. So this could actually be a really interesting place to stay yeah. in the winter. You get a beautiful, yeah. like snowy weekend, and this could be absolutely charming to tuck into. So another one is the yurt at Rivendell Romance in the Forest in Ooh. the state of Washington. Uh, and these are $149 to $175. Again, I don't, that's not as terrible as some of the glam- Camping I've seen, and perhaps maybe that's why these reviews of these places are so good. The prices aren't terrible. No. So, so this is a yurt. If you don't know what a yurt is, it's kind of like a octagonal tent, kind of a permanent tent. 18-sided is what they're calling this one. An octagon. Octadecagon. Octadecagon. I've never heard that word before because deca. Oh, 18 sides. It's 18 sides. Yeah. So octodecagon. Wow. So this is the description. You might want to brush up on your Elvish before booking your stay at Rivendell, an octodecagon, 18 sided yurt style cabin set deep in the Washington woods, a little over an hour from Portland, Oregon. Dreams of Ents are highly likely as you slumber in one of the two Murphy beds inside the entirely wooden cylindrical space. The cabin has a full bathroom and fully outfitted kitchen, dining room, and wood stove. And you can hike through the mountains, the Columbia River Gorge. There's an outdoor grill. And it's wheelchair accessible except for the hot tub. Oh, there's a hot tub. So there's a hot tub, the bathroom, the kitchen. You want to know why I don't want to go here? I am not a fan of all the Lord of the Rings references. It's a hard pass for <laughs> See, me. I love on. that. No, it's a hard. That is a total having dated someone for an extensive period of time <laughs> who was a big, whose family was really into Lord of the Rings. Well, it would have been kind of when the movies came out then too, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. But this was, I mean, to the point where, and I think we have tried to actually listen to the audiobooks uh-huh. in the car. We have. We we didn't, I don't, we didn't listen to all of it. But No, we stopped because it was so boring. The guy that I used to date so he and his father and then two other friends of mine, two other uh, yeah. guy friends of mine, they used to go every year to Colorado and they would pick a different 14er and they would go out for a week and they would summit the 14er yeah. in Colorado. And it was always the four of them. And every year they would always listen to the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy there and back. Whoa. Right, right. Every year. Every now and then there's like a social media post I see out there that's like, what book is worse than the movie? You know, because usually the whole thing is like the books are yeah. always better than the movie. And my response is always Lord of the Rings. And I know I'll get some flack from that because I just think. No, it is. I think it is so overwritten. <laughs> it there just is, needs a good editor. <laughs> there is an entire section. And now I I like the movies for the mm. most part. I I tend to really, really dislike Frodo and Sam. Yeah. I really dislike Frodo yeah, and Sam. Yeah, dislike them in the books too. Um, <laughs> I like them more in the books than I do in the movie. Uh, but the movies themselves are fine. They're, a, you know, and part of that is because they did a really good job and because I've read all of the books, I've read The Hobbit, I've read all the Lord of the Rings. Remember, I was dating a guy who was really into it. So, so by extension, have. I was really into it. And there's just sections like if you remember when we started listening to it and we got into this whole section about Goldberry and whatever his name was. And they Tom had Bombadil. Tom Bombadil. I just tried so hard yeah, to forget him. There's a him. reason they're they're cut from the movie. Oh my goodness gracious. And it goes so, on and on. Yeah. And now that said, um, friends of the show, uh, Jesse and Rachel, who have a great Instagram, <laughs> the taste for adventure, you should go check them out. They just got a new truck. They got a white Ram. And they named it 
Randolph the White, which I think is quite possibly the best truck name. I'm sad that we didn't think of it for yeah. for Ramo. How embarrassing. Our <laughs> truck was called Ramo well, and it was white well, and we could have named it Randolph the White and we didn't. See, I love I do I love I love Lord of the Rings. I really do. I love the movies. Oh, I Ian just, McKellen is just like the books phenomenal. Are just too much for me. It just starts. Uh, and I some... even love that, like that that animated, um, that old animated version of The Hobbit. I really like a lot. Oh, I don't remember oh, this. It's, yeah, it's good. And, I'm sorry. Uh, if, uh, the only one I know has Watson. I don't. In it, so. I don't love the the new Hobbit movies. Anyway, oh, glamping oh. is this thing. This How dare you? Fun. That mo- uh. the Hobbit reunites <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman together. Because Cumberbatch is the voice of Smog, the dragon. Count? Does it that counts. count as it them counts. being By reunited? The way, where's that season of Sherlock? Have you even seen? Where you haven't it? even seen all the Hobbit movies. I haven't seen the third one, yeah, but exactly. I read the book. So it's basically because the like second the one, you're like, uh, okay, can we just finish this? I mean, was I like, why does this need to be three movies? Because it, yes. it's not a three, but the the actual book is like a third of the size of one of the three other books. You know what we should watch? And this is, this is so much about glamping. Wow, this segment's really... What we should be watching is that new series. It's not even new anymore. Amazon did the Lord of the Rings prequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think it'll have uh, Liv Tyler doing a really deep voice in it? Because <laughs> that was always a favorite part of mine, too. Yeah, I mean, at least she's ac- accurately an elf, but... <laughs> anyway so we'll share this so... article in the show notes if you want to learn some more about the top glamping resorts across the country but i i you know i think it's something that i would like to try sometime oh for or sure at least i think maybe we've talked a lot about our parents traveling with us a little bit sometime in the future and perhaps like we go to a campground that has campsites that we stay at and we put them up in a glamping style mm-hmm. accommodation that could be kind of cool there's a couple of really beautiful glamping locations uh in the blue ridge mountains yeah. that i would absolutely love to go and check out i just want to own like one of those fancy like like the really traditional canvas tents yeah hey can we give a shout out to the glamping dome at gateway on ranger creek in tennessee yeah, like you need to look this up beautiful. just come look at this article just for this beautifully dome shaped location. This is what, to me, like if I'm going to go, it's sort of like all those really cool, unique places you can rent through like Airbnb or Verbo. Like if I'm going to go do something like this, hello to the glamping dome in Ranger Creek in Tennessee that does have a price between $158 and $457 a night. Still, I mean, I would expect to pay upwards of that for a cabin. And this looks like a cabin on the inside. It's a modern luxury apartment is what they call it. But most of it is like clear dome like i'm sure it's like plastic and not glass but it's Mm -hmm. you can you know you're basically sleeping under the stars which i love i mean listen this is a spacious living room a brand new kitchen a convertible sofa bed heat ac tiled shower two tv streaming services a fire pit outside ducks and chickens wander the ground Chicks and ducks. ducks and geese better scurry. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. I was waiting to see if that. Uh, <laughs> and they're there to provide mosquito control. How smart is that? Yeah, mosquito control. Is... But I don't know what that's really doing <laughs> in Tennessee. Like, <laughs> yeah. So this is about an hour outside of Chattanooga in the South Cumberland Mountains. I would love to spend some more time down there. Chattanooga was cool. Yeah, it really was. I'd like to do a little more Chattanooga choo-choo down there. Chances are you've seen them on the road. That's because Blue Ox designs and manufactures the best towing products in the industry. Just look around. You'll find them on highways and campgrounds and anywhere you find people traveling in the great outdoors. Award-winning tow bars, base plates, and brakes. A full line of weight distributing hitches. Adjustable ball mounts and a new line of fifth wheel hitches. With Blue Ox, towing doesn't have to be a drag. To learn more about how Blue Ox can make your travel adventures even more stress-free, visit blueox.com. Get ready to use your outside voice. Whether you're camping at a local state park, driving cross-country to a music festival, or just want to try out the RV life before you buy, the adventure begins as soon as you step inside your RV share rental. Choose from thousands of options, including pet-friendly RVs and RVs that can be delivered right to your campsite. Each booking on RV Share also includes 24-7 roadside assistance for the ultimate peace of mind on the open road. 
With a wide-ranging inventory from affordable pop-up campers to luxury motorhomes, RV Share has a rental that is perfect for you. Book your RV now for the solar eclipse this April. There is still availability near the path of totality, and make sure to check out RV Share's Total Solar Eclipse RV Guide. Use promo code RVMILES30 for $30 off a $500 rental or more at RVShare.com. That's RVMILES30 for $30 off $500 at RVShare.com. So today we want to talk about our visit to Homer, Alaska. Homer is is a really interesting little spot. Homer's a town, right? And then there's this thing called the Homer spit. And I remember looking up what the definition of a spit is. I have it right Did, here. did you pull it's that our, up? Why don't you go It's in our fun that? fact. So yeah. I think we should say before we get into this, that our time in Homer, we didn't really do a lot in yeah, Homer. That's my fault. So there are a ton of things to do. And as I was researching and going back and looking over this article, I have a lot of things that I can suggest. But as we'll talk about as we get into our experience in Homer, Jason was really sick while we were there. So we needed him to rest. We wanted him to rest. So we opted to just kind of stay home a lot. So we're going to have some suggestions for you, but just know that a lot of these we have not vetted ourselves. We weren't able to do. So let's do a, a little bit of fun facts though about Homer. So we like a good fun fact here at RV Miles. So the first thing is, is that it's only about 120 miles Southwest of Anchorage, which I don't know why I expected it to be so much further. And probably because the trek that we took like in yeah. and around the state, it, it feels like it should be further than 125 miles from Anchorage, but it's not. Well, and it's a beautiful drive down Stunning. here. And the, the thing though, that you have to be concerned with is when you drive, because the, when the salmon are spawning, the yes. the traffic is insane and it's a lots of people pulling boats yeah. and the traffic can get really tough on a two lane highway especially on the weekends and this can be a really hard area to get a campground reservation so yeah. kind of be mindful of what that season is and when everyone is down there because you may want to not come in at that time, unless that's something that's really, really important to you. And if you're trying to do that for this year, I hope you have your campground booked already. Uh, so Homer was incorporated in 1961. So it's only been a city for 63 years Wow! and it has a population of 5,719. That's really big. That's, that's a surprisingly big well, listen, to me. That's more than Seward. Listen, the nurse said they were in their busy season They were in the ER. So I, there's 5,700 people there plus tourists that they're taking care of in the summer. It is located on the Kenai Peninsula and it has an elevation of 95 feet there at Homer. Uh, it is, as Jason mentioned at the top of the show, it is called the halibut fishing capital of the world. And for a lot of people, it is the jumping off point for visiting Katmai National Park and Preserve and Lake Clark National Park and Preserve. Along the spit, the Homer spit, there are tons of tour agencies that you can book to take a helicopter, a float plane, or a boat tour out to these parks because both of those parks are not accessible by car. The you have to take one of the three to get there. In general, the Kenai Peninsula, I think, is sort of the most popular place that mm -hmm. folks head to. And we're going to talk about Seward next week, and Seward is is part of the Kenai Peninsula as well. And I think for your first trip to Alaska, if you're not, if you don't have the time to like go crazy all over the state, like I think, I think like what we did was sort of make the Kenai Peninsula yeah. a, a, a bit of a centerpiece, uh, a, a place that you want to spend some time and really hit up a lot of the places are, because this is where a lot of these national parks are. It's a little, where a lot of coastline is. So mm -hmm. you can do a lot of coastal type tours. You can get out on the water, you can get on, Air, uh, on planes. When we were talking about Talkeetna taking a train trip, the general advice for most folks is that in order to really see Alaska, you need to get on a train or a plane or a boat. You you just got to get like out there. And especially the, the plane tours and the boat tours can really get you a perspective that it's very hard to do in an RV. And you can find a lot of that in the Kenai Peninsula area. Yeah, especially the time of year that we were there. So June through September is really, this is brown bear season in this area. So if you are wanting to see bears, if you are wanting to see glaciers, as Jason mentioned, that's when you're getting on a boat 
that's when you're getting on a plane, really. And we'll talk about some of that when we get to Seward, which is going to be our very last discussion, because I did do a boat tour that offered some of these options to see some of what makes Alaska so incredibly special. But here in Homer from June through late September, this is where brown bears are congregating. And so you can go out and you can see them out in the parks. And depending on the season, you can see them digging for clams at low tide, grazing on salty grasses, running after salmon, swimming upstream. There's just an amazing opportunity in the summer to see wildlife in a really natural setting. There is also, and this is what we were seeing from our campground, there is also Ketchumac Bay State Park. I apologize if I... (laughs) said it wrong. I couldn't quite hone in on exactly how to say it. I got a lot of different pronunciations, but it is Alaska's first state park. It is not accessible by road, but it has a stunning glacier and mountains and forests and oceans and all these rock formations. It's everything that you can see in this park. And that is the glacier that we were seeing from our campground. Mm -hmm was this state park. So there are so many opportunities, so many things I wish that we could have done while we were in Homer, but it wasn't realistic. And that's kind of the thing about a big Alaska trip like this. You really do need to build in time to just rest. I know that sounds crazy when you're like, oh my gosh, but I'm in Alaska and I've only got three weeks. You burn out fast. And, you know, burnout sometimes leads to illness but also um, you budget wise, these are all fairly expensive tours. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you just want to, it, it's worth it to save some money and have it for some of these. And you can't just do a hundred of them. Right? I mean, you could, maybe your budget is totally unlimited and you've been yeah. saving for a long time and that's awesome. And I hope that that is the case and you can do everything your heart desires. But for us, for sure, we really had to having just done that train trip in Talkeetna, which cost our family about $600 to do. We knew that then coming into Seward, we had, we were meeting friends and we wanted to be able to do some activities like that with them. We knew that it just wasn't realistic for us to go and spend a thousand plus dollars for our family here in Homer. So we kind of used this as an opportunity to enjoy the beautiful surroundings, but to also rest and recuperate before we headed on to Seward to meet friends who were flying in to meet us. So those are some of the things that you can do from a tour perspective while you're in Homer. There are tons of places to camp, both private campgrounds and city campgrounds, We stayed in a city campground that was called Mariner Park. It's right at the beginning of the spit. So the Homer spit, as Jason alluded to, is like four and a half miles long. And it goes out into, it's just like this uh, strip of land. Yeah, it's just a long, skinny strip of land. So you can, you know, throw a rock from one side of it to the other, probably. Uh, maybe if you have a really good arm. Yeah. So we. So <laughs> but the, don't throw rocks. Please don't throw rocks across the road. It's just a, an example. <laughs> so <still. laughs> Mariner Park is just a. It's a parking lot essentially. It is. Um, where people go and sit and fish and have have uh, cookouts and stuff, but they have uh, designated camping sites there. They are first come first serve. And we highly recommend site thirty four. It's on the end of the row that has more of the a water view because you will have a water view and you're going to be able to walk right out onto the beach. And Site 34 is on the far right. And it's big enough that if you have a smaller RV like we did, we were able to turn sideways so that our door faced the water, which was like awesome. <laughs> yeah, it, because it's a little... It's a little weird the way they are, the way they're laid out in this spot. There was some confusion by folks as to which side of the camp post, even though the posts have arrows on them that they park on. And some people are like parking a little too close to one side. So if you're like door to door, it gets, it gets, it's one of those places where people would prefer, say you're in a motor home, right? you would probably prefer to pull in Mm -hmm. and have your front windshield facing out on the bay. Yeah. But if you're in a trailer, you would back in as you always do, because there's, you can't 
pull your truck out onto the beach or whatever. Right. So you end up having people door to door and it gets a little weird. And there was some like, there was some anger happening with that, with a few people that were wanting the spot next to us and stuff. And like, that was weird. That was, and you know, thankfully again, cause we were smaller, 25 feet, we could fit into our spot with our door. You know, we could fit in our spot sideways and stay in our spot. And so each spot also has sort of a path that like our spot had a little path that ran to it. And then kind of up the hill a little bit was our fire pit and a picnic table. But what often happens sometimes in boondocking spots like this, where it's just like a big parking lot is as Jason just kind of alluded to people just decide that the, they don't really have to pay attention to boundaries you know, it's, oh, it's just parking lot. I'll walk wherever I want to walk. I'll walk, you know, yeah. and that happened, you know, that happened to us a lot in, um, Fairbanks. And then it happened to us here. And I know some people might say like, well, you are in a parking lot, you know, it's not a big deal. But you, there's, it, but, but it is a campground. It is designated sites. Like you pay, you go I to a pay $30 box and a you night. enter the number for the site you're staying in and you're, you've rented that site. But also I just think I don't, I don't want to walk through someone else's space. Let everyone have their own little corner of this beautiful world here that we've all worked really hard to get to be that even just down the street, we all work really hard to camp well, and I, like I, let people just have that the, little section. This was the trade off though, of us having this wonderful insight is be, it's just, yeah. this is where people wanted to cross through. Yeah. And so that's, that is something to remember is that we had some people that were really respectful of that and, Everyone kind of was like, you know, made their own little corner of the world because we were there for about a week. And then some people just were like, the, there are no rules. This is a free for all. Um, I'm just going to walk through wherever I want to walk through it. I'm going to set up shop wherever I want to set up shop. And, um, you know, we're all different RVers and you have to be flexible and fluid and uh, shut your door when you want to complain about it. So yeah. <laughs> your neighbors but don't hear you. <laughs> it, it was one of those places where we really just sat and camped there. Uh, we, we did. The we, view was so stunning. I just so gorgeous. We did stay one other place in Homer um, because we did, this was dry camping here. We needed to then dump and fill and, you know, charge up batteries and stuff. We didn't have the, you know, the clear skies that week. So we did go to a KOA for a night, maybe two. I we can't did remember, two, two nights, nights at the KOA Homer Bay Crest and we paid about $77 a night. So the private campgrounds with the full hookups, those are expensive and tight, tight sites. We weren't in one of the premium sites either. We were up against the road, really near the exit. Yeah. These and, were brand new sites that they had and, just kind of I, laid gravel down right before we arrived. I don't mean just close to your neighbor. I mean, difficult to get into yes. sites. Yeah. Um, and it, it isn't a wonderful location. Some of the sites have a gorgeous view, uh, although we were fogged in the entire time we were yeah. at, at this campground. Um, and of course, 70, some bucks a night is kind of expensive, but you're going to find a lot of that for the full hookup stuff in Alaska. And pretty much all the full hookup stuff we saw in Alaska was, was tight. And well, I mean, uh, we were paying $30 a night yeah. to dry camp. Yeah. So for 47 more dollars a night, we were getting electricity. We were getting sewer. We were getting water. We were getting access to yeah. laundry. You know, we were kind of paying for the amenities because it was time and we needed them. And there's a couple of private campgrounds on, or I think at least one that I know of on the spit as well. And they take reservations, I do believe. So there are other options uh, besides just the two that we mentioned. But again, it's kind of one of those things where you have to be really flexible with the first come first served sort of thing. Like you just, you don't know. We opted to, to come in on a weekday in hopes that we would have more options for first come first served than if we tried to arrive like on a Thursday or Friday, we came in in the early part of the week. I think it was like a Monday or Tuesday and we didn't stay too far. So we didn't have far to drive to get to Homer. We wanted to make sure that we could get there and find a place. And if not, then we were going to have to figure something out, have your backup to your backup to your backup, right? Especially as you're traveling around Alaska and utilizing a lot of first come first served campgrounds. Uh, A few things we can mention About the Homer spit, we did do a few things um, before illness really took you and 
you were knocked out. Uh, we ate, we can recommend uh, the boardwalk fish and chips. The whole sort of section of this bit where it's, it's like the retail shops and restaurants, it's all sort of a boardwalk wharf type feel. So you, you go park in like a city parking lot and then you can walk up and down all the shops on, on the wharf. So we, we, we did that. And then we went to this fish and chips place. Yeah, it was really or, good. It was delicious. And there's a lot of art galleries here too. So there's a lot of opportunity to see local artists and, and get some souvenirs or some art to take home from Alaska. Seafood restaurants abound on the wharf here. And this is a really, there's several kind of, it's like broken up into different sections of like shopping districts almost along the spit. So there's a lot to do. You can easily spend a whole day there. Of course, uh, we enjoyed some delicious coffee from Coal Town Coffee and Tea. We really liked that. I went there a couple of times. And in fact, from Mariner, there is a path that walks, uh, you cross the street and there is a path that'll go the whole length. You can ride your bike all the way to the end of the spit. So if you have your bikes with you, that is an option as well. If you don't want to drive in, you can do that four and a half mile bike ride, stop, eat, have a good time, take your bike back to the campground. So that's kind of really all that we did was we yeah. ate and we drank coffee and then I got sick. And so we, and we took Jason to visit the ER. We don't need to get too deep into this because we, we, we talked, talked about, about it, it when yeah. it happened, but essentially what happened is my, my neck just got so stiff that I couldn't turn my head. And at first I thought it was like a muscular thing or something. And then it was very clear that this was not normal. I couldn't move my neck at all. And uh, we went to the ER. In the ER, there is wonderful brand new place. And we joked about this when we talked about it last time. We get in, uh, check in, sit down in chairs in the lobby and not, I mean, we weren't, I'm not kidding, sitting down for like five seconds before somebody came to the door and called my name. And and then they were so apologetic for the wait. Yes. <laughs> and we are used to, you know, Chicago emergency rooms waiting six hours, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. When you're like seriously <laughs> ill. I, I remember one time I was <laughs> I was in an emergency room in Chicago. Remember when I had when I had meningitis, which uh -huh. could have been what I had here, who knows? because uh, they never found out what I actually had. But I did have some sort of virus that was causing this. They think like my crazy swollen lymph my nodes. Lymph no my lymph nodes were very swollen. That's what it was. But of course, we took him because, and they ran all kinds of tests on him because yeah. of his past history with um, yeah. the brain infection, the viral infection, or the bacterial. They ran all these tests yeah. on him because everyone was like, whoa, what's going on with this guy? We don't know. Yeah. Just, just, just Jason. But do you remember when I had meningitis in, in, the, uh, in Chicago? We had really kind of just started dating. Oh yeah, um, you were at you Cook came County to visit me. I went to Cook County Hospital, which you know I didn't have insurance then. It was the free hospital in Chicago. It's um, the college which, student. But actually, they did. You know, they did a fantastic job there. It's just a very busy hospital because it's the the free county hospital. Mm -hmm. But I there was a guy there when I was waiting in the lobby that had a drill sticking out of his knee. Mm -mm. I mean, Don't need, like all of it, mm -mm. like the drill attached to the drill bit, the drill bit in his knee. Ooh, and he you, got needed to, you needed to trigger warn that because I was not expecting that to be what you he just had it, said. Like, wrapped wow. in a towel. And you would think that that's kind of the kind of person that they'd be like, oh, yes, come right on in. He sat in the in like the waiting room in the chairs. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, when I after Henry was born in 2013 and Henry's it's a story for another day. I might tell it someday as a, um, a detour. Uh, Cause I know a lot of people have asked and have been really curious cause we allude to it from time to time. But after he was born and everything that went through with that and I came home and they sent me home way too early. They never should have sent me home after only three days and they sent me home and uh, I was going back and forth to the NICU cause Henry was still in the NICU and I got really, really sick and had to be, uh, had come home after being in the NICU all day with Henry and sat down on the couch and proceeded to like just vomit all over myself. And I was running a fever. And so I was, you and my mom took me back to the ER and this is at Northwestern downtown. And, uh, I laid in your lap just 
feeling like I was going to die, I think for like, like four or five hours yeah, before just, I finally got admitted got seen, and then yeah. got admitted back into Prentice. And that Women's was a hospital. good hospital. And that was, yeah, I mean, that's one of the top hospitals in the country. And, yeah. but it's downtown Chicago. And, you know, unless Which I guess, busy. I busy. mean, maybe even I guess I couldn't say unless something was sticking out of my eye because clearly the guy with the drill was like, no, you're fine, sir. But like, even that wasn't enough, wasn't severe enough for them to like get me in knowing like what had just happened to me like three or four days, like a week prior, yeah. it wasn't enough. And so when we are sitting there and they call you in, both of us are just like, what? Wait, wait, are you sure you have, is there another Jason that person like here? There's like nobody else there. And they're <laughs> talking about it. They're, they're in their busy season, whatever. And, and they're, they're like, we're going to run the, all the tests on you. And they did it right away. And yeah. I thought we would be there for the Hours. doctor saw us right away. The doctor talked to us for like 45 oh minutes. Oh, and that talked about us about being full-time <laughs> RVers. He beca- I don't even know. I don't, maybe, so is he busy. still listening? <laughs> He's, he subscribed to the podcast <laughs> while he was in there. If you are still listening, you are a phenomenal doctor, sir. Thank you so much for caring like, that much know, about my husband. So, you know what? It's, like I'm, I'm 43. So I'm at that age where like sometimes you forget that you're getting old. <laughs> like. You're not what old are you talking yet, about? I'm, right? We're but still like, like but 40's like, the new 30. What are you talking so this about? Doc, this doctor, I, I, he was probably 30 something. He felt like he was 20 something. Oh my gosh. And I was he like, was and I was having a memory of like, you know, when I first felt like an adult, I, I never felt like an adult until like professional athletes were younger than me. I still don't feel like an adult. So I'm glad at least one of us sitting here feels like an adult because I certainly don't. Anyway. That, yeah. So the, if you need an ER visit or if you're thinking like, you know, plan it for when you're in Homer, I guess. Yeah. I just, yeah. that was a fantastic ER. So that was kind of like our time in Homer, Alaska. It was, a, it was a lot of resting, but it's a beautiful, beautiful area. And it's a nice precursor to where we went next, which is Seward. And we're going to talk about that on a future episode of the podcast. Did you know that eTrailer.com is focused on putting actual hands on the products they sell? That allows the representatives to see, touch, and know exactly what it is like to use the product they're providing you with quality service and recommendations based on personal experience. If you're looking for a one-stop shop, eTrailer.com has you covered with a variety of RV items, including towing options, interior accessories, replacement parts, storage, and more. Have you ever wondered where you can find some of the odd parts for your RV online? eTrailer.com is where you do it. Visit RVMiles.com slash eTrailer and receive free shipping on orders over $99. That's RVMiles.com slash eTrailer. More in a moment, but first, this video is sponsored by RV Life Pro. The RV lifestyle is about community, and the RV community is at the heart of RV Life. RV Life recently celebrated the one millionth trip planned with RV Life Trip Wizard, their excellent trip planning tool for RVers. Featuring all the trusted reviews, pictures, and tips from their RV Life campground site, Trip Wizard is often discussed on another long-term RV Life community, irv2.com. RV Life also features features several blog sites and over 20 additional RVing forums to serve the RV community. All of this experience and community feedback come together to help create a fantastic RV trip planner and mobile navigation tool collectively called RV Life Pro. RV Life also marked a milestone of over 3 billion miles traveled using RV Life Pro, counting both the planned RV trips and ad hoc navigation with the included RV Safe mobile app. Take 25% off of RV Life Pro with the coupon code RV Miles. Visit RVLife.com and get 25% off with code RV Miles. So, Jay, it is time to check the level of our tanks. Sponsored by our friends, Liquefied RV Toilet Treatment, the no BS toilet treatment. You can find it on their website at liquefiedrv.com. Okay, what is in your black tank this week? So, this is a big story that was in the New York Times. I talked about it in the news video, but I uh, I, you haven't heard it yet, A, because you haven't watched the news video because you don't usually, don't. <laughs> but but B, because I haven't put it out yet. Uh, so you wouldn't know about it. But this, this really uh, shocked me quite a bit. Automakers 
have been some of them, uh, particularly General Motors and I think Hyundai and Kia have been sharing your driving data with your insurance company. Like you specifically, not just like we as a whole, this is how people drive. What they've been doing, if you sign up for like some of their car connected features on some of them, uh, particularly if they have those, the things that are like, do you want to track your driving and see how to code of a driver you are? And us can give you some feedback on how you, how you drive. They've been sharing that information with a data broker who then sells it to your insurance company and your insurance rate goes up because of that, which just blows my mind. They say they have the right to do it, that you agreed to it somewhere, but, but only some people actually have. And what the New York times found is some people, some of these agreements don't have any mention of sharing this data in it whatsoever. So there, this all came to light because a guy uh, got a, got a 260 some page report as a part, part of the fair credit reporting act. He called this company, uh, Lexus Nexus that does that sort of data brokering and got a report on him in like 160 pages of it were him and his wife driving their car on, on this day, they, they, they were speeding, they were breaking hard, all that sort of stuff. And I just, I, I, it's, it's, it's really incredible to me. Wow. So I've, it made me think about like, so we have our, our Tesla, right? So we've got our, we've got our Ford truck, which we love. And we have our Tesla, which we love. Uh, our Tesla insurance kind of does the same thing, but it's very open and, and upfront. Yeah. So, we know going into yeah, it that that's we, what it's We doing. signed up for this and you can get whatever insur insurance yeah. you want with the Tesla. But if you use Tesla's insurance, they grade your driving and they show you in the app what your grade is. Like you've been, you've been driving at night a lot. So your insurance is, is going up. Or, Anybody want to guess whose driving record might be better? It's mine. It's 100% mine. Oh, is it? Oh, it is. <laughs> you know, you know what gets you, what you gets know, what me? gets you, what gets me unsafe following distance. No, that is a hard, that's a hard BS. Hard BS. You. Because I often have cruise control on and I have it set to the furthest so Distance. So when you, when we're running cruise, auto, seven, oh. seven car, seven car lengths. Yeah. When you're running autopilot, which is cruise control in a Tesla, uh, it's not self-driving. It's even though it's called autopilot, it's not really yes, no, no, no. when you're running autopilot, it doesn't count. I'm not running autopilot. I don't use cruise Rainbow control. Road. Cruise control is part of autopilot. I can't help that people in this country are yes. bad drivers. But you know I can't help it that someone decides that they're just going to go ahead and stop for the sake of stopping when they don't need to. Well, what gets me to is like, there are, there are places like, for instance, on the drive down here uh, uh -huh. to the office uh, on 11th street, there's a curve. And if a car is parked in a certain spot on that curve, both the Tesla and the Ford will do like do the, the, ding the ding flashing the, red yeah, automatic the, emergency braking warning. Like they think I'm going to yeah. hit that car when really I'm just heading the curb. So in the Ford, I'm not, it's no big deal, but in the Tesla, that's, I won't take that route anymore because in the Tesla, that is actually increasing our insurance costs. I told you what the Tesla has been doing to me when I go over the I-74 yeah. bridge. Yeah. There's it like a shadow the from the bridge. Yeah. And it like slams the brakes yeah. on, on me, which is it's like, still, like for the Tesla, it's still cheaper insurance this way. So it doesn't bother me is, that much, but it bothers me. And it bothers me particularly though, when they're, when they're sharing this information without people knowing it, this is, I'm going back to this about me. This is crud. I think that this is because you also drive faster than me. This is because I, I, I deactivated my ex account and I am being singled out. Okay. <laughs> Elon, this, Elon is looking directly at is, you. He has focused in on me now that he's, you know, cut a deal and he's not worried about that kid reporting his like jet traffic anymore. He's like focused in on me now and he's coming at me. Because yeah. I mm -hmm. have to deal with the kind of drivers that I have to deal with. Yeah. Wow. Wow. All right. Sorry. Wow. 
<laughs> also, I drive the Tesla more than Jason, so it's only natural that I would sure. be singled out. Uh, what sure. is in your fresh tank this week? Uh, I would know if you didn't start reading an email in the middle of us oh, recording but my a podcast. Email and is, like, my email is my black tank. You're not even so... on, you're on my computer. What are you doing here? Like, slow your roll, okay? I am just trying to provide the important information people need in these Fresh Tank Black uh, Tank my, segments. My Fresh Tank is uh, is Blue Ox. Blue Ox has been a sponsor of the show for a, a very long time. They make just some fantastic hitch products. They are sort of known as the top company to go to if you want to tow a vehicle behind your motor home to get sort of the tow bar uh, set up for that. Blue Ox has just come out with custom hitches for cars and SUVs and trucks if you don't have the, the actual hitch receiver. So if you have a car or a, a minivan or a truck that doesn't have a hitch on it and you want to add a hitch to it, Blue Ox has just come out with ones that are they're not like the adjustable type that fit any car. They're actually customized for each individual brand. Oh, cool. And they look, they almost look stock. They're, they're painted really nicely and, and they fit in really well and mount really well. So they've just come out with that new line. Blue Ox also has uh, an interesting hitch that they came out with several months ago that is sort of like the Anderson fifth wheel hitch. Um, but it doesn't require you to add a coupler onto the onto the hitch itself. You actually use the regular kingpin that the RV has, and that goes down into sort of like a funnel thing. And it's all steel. It's definitely much heavier than the Anderson hitch, but it's all steel. And, you know, it attaches to a goose ball. So if you have that sort of setup and um, are uncomfortable with the Anderson hitch for some reason, uh, the Blue Ox might be a, a good way to go for you. But I thought that was cool that they they came out with some some new hitches. Yeah, I wonder if it would have been a cheaper option than what we had done for the Tesla because we had them put. Well, yeah, we had the stock one. We put had the on, stock one um, put on, which was not cheap. No. And will we ever tell dumb. anything with it? I don't know. No, it's well, the, dumb, the reason we, we got it though was it, a, if we ever wanted to do like a electric vehicle tow test or something. Right. But also so we can put a bike rack on it. Yeah. That's we really we pretend like here. we're going to put a bike rack on yeah. it someday. Yeah. yeah. We like to pretend hey, like so we're So there is a new, like, here, I'll give myself a second fresh tank though. So there's a new trade, you know, we've, we, I went out to California, actually going back out to California next week again to see the, the pebble trailer again, the pebble uh -huh. trailer with the electric, uh, ax, uh, axle on it, powered axle It's a little too heavy to be towed with the model, uh, yeah. y like we have, but Bolas, who is, uh, another sort of like high end boutique, uh, camping company. They make sort of silver trailers, kind of like an Airstream. Mm -hmm. They've act, the company's actually been around for over a hundred years, but it, just in the last ten years, they've come back. They were gone for a while, and, and somebody resurrected them. They have just come out with a powered axle trailer, like the Pebble, uh, like the E Stream, that is a thirty five hundred pound GVWR with a full bedroom in it, full Ooh. bathroom in it. So that could be pulled with the Tesla Model Y. Oh, pull us. Call us. Yeah. We can take that out. It's only $130,000. We'll make sure we have insurance. <laughs> It'll be fine. Just call me. We'll, we'll take it out with the Tesla. And we'll see what it, how, yeah. how it does, how it performs. All right. That's All very right. cool. What is in your black tank this week? So my black tank is this email that we got this morning, um, and which is what you alluded to oh, that I was so looking you were at. Just, you were just jumping ahead and not listening to me. Uh, yeah. No, I was yeah, listening. I gotcha. I'm always listening, just like I'm mm. listening when you do the news. I do um, sort of zone out sometimes in your fresh tanks when they're about yeah. like a book or something that I'm yeah, never going to read. Yeah, I know you do because you, you don't read and that's fine. And <laughs> Um, I read, that's why you don't, I just don't, I don't read fiction. I would like it known that this is why you don't know that we had a coffee subscription because you zone out when I talk about things like coffee, old timey stuff. And Cause books. you, I mean, you know, it's like when Ethan talks to us about football, I love football, I, but the kid can talk about like, you know, the third stringers on the depth chart for the, for like the Atlanta Falcons. And I'm like, uh, Oh, okay. And that is why you don't have a football dance with Ethan. And I it's, do. It's true. Okay. That's I, why. I know you zone out too though. Don't lie. I, 
<laughs> or when Henry talk, Henry wants to talk to us about Ninja Turtles or our, Fortnite. Oh my I hope goodness. our children never listen they, to this the, episode. Just like we, we don't listen to each other, they don't listen to this podcast. Well, and they That's also good. don't listen to us, even <laughs> when we're talking to them about important things that they should know about. So we get this email today, and the title of it is, is the On the Road to Adventure, the Ultimate Road Trip Playlist for Spring Break. Mm-hmm. So it catches my eye. I open it up. And it's from, I'm still trying to decipher, like, if Camping World knows that this email went out on their behalf. I can't, I can't tell. But it is, if you are planning a road trip for spring break, Camping World has put together a selection of the most energizing male and female artists to listen to while driving and start your trip on a high note. The most energetic, according to Camping World, artist that we should all be listening to. And this is not a shade to this music. Like uh-huh. I like this artist. I just feel I'm surprised that this is going from gaming world. The number one in the number one position is post Malone for the most okay. energetic followed by trippy red and Mac Miller. After that, we need to go to Carol G SZA and Taylor Swift. This is all fine. I'm going through this. And it goes on, and this is probably a little bit more of a gray tank, Mm -hmm. but it goes to talk about how they have rated it based on energy, energy level, and loudness. That doesn't, that, why? Just so you don't like fall asleep? Is that the whole thing? Yes. That it literally says that in here to keep you awake. And like keep you engaged on long road trips. I why listen, I'm, heavy why metal I'm, music can put me to sleep. Listen, this is not, it is not about the, the energy the, level of the music. It's about whether I like the music I, and want to sing along to it. I I feel like I need to talk again. I need to talk to you, camping world. This is, one of those this is such a missed opportunity. If you are going to put out press releases or you're going to pay someone from jellyfish.com to put out a press release on your behalf, at least seem like you put some effort into it and you understand some of the demographics in RVing. The I, only people I, well, here, now you're saying that, but. No, no, I think that there, I know a ton of these artists and I would have a ton of them on here. This is also something else that was on the news this week. The median age that purchases an RV right now has gone down to 35 years old. That's fine. I am not arguing the validity of these artists. I don't know. I, I only know Post Malone, Taylor Swift, and Harry Styles. That's it. This whole list. That's fine. And you know Justin Bieber. Stop it. Justin like, Bieber? Justin is he still producing music? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Please stop. Yes, he is. Um, <laughs> yes. How old do I sound now? So this is... <laughs> there's just a lot about this press release that's very... My son says we don't say this anymore, but there's a lot that's sussy or suspect. We don't say that. Apparently that's done now. We don't say that anymore. Well, anytime the adults start saying the thing, know, the thing is not a thing you say. So anymore. there's a lot to question about this press release. And I think it's more the yeah. press release that I'm black tanking than the actual development of a this road always, trip this- because it's hold on. This is hold on. Listen. So it is quoted that Connor Lund, an RV expert at camping world, Having the right music at the start of a road trip is just as important as getting to the destination. Not every mile will produce spectacular it's views. Just as important? <laughs> well, listen, he's an RV expert, it's just, Jason. But having the right music is just as important as getting there? Yeah. No. <laughs> I think so the whole you'll thing need, is about getting there. This is, listen to this, though. What I love is it ends with keep the music flowing. So, okay, he goes on to say, so you'll need something to keep you entertained the rest of the time. And what better way to do that than with your favorite tunes? Keep the music flowing when you get to the campsite with the wireless party speaker. So Connor also is selling me something Mm -hmm. in this. Connor, the RV expert, is selling me something. You're better off staying awake by listening to your favorite podcaster. But what is amazing, <laughs> the only- Who is literally, you have, people have only, commented, we put them to sleep. Right, so I, yeah. maybe that's not the best idea. But the only podcast you need on a road trip is ours and a host of others as well, because there are some amazing podcasts out there that we listen to all the time and are just a little bit more enjoyable. But also, I 
think that something like this, I, I would never write about this. How I would, do you rate, because, how do you rate these artists though? Like as the level of energy, how does, how does that even a thing? The energy level. I, this is, I mean, all of these artists have ballads, right? I mean, not all of them. Eminem doesn't. So these are, what's amazing is. Cause he, um, Eminem's under the loudest list. <laughs> well, but now they go on though, even though in the beginning it makes it seem like they're, they're um, the loudest, they're loudest artists. This is a playlist of loudest art. And I, I didn't articulate it well at the top of this. I can tell now because of the way you're responding. They're saying these are the loudest artists you should avoid when you're driving. Oh, to avoid so any not, distractions so you on the listen road. To high energy, but not loudest. So your loudest Does, male my artists car are, have a volume knob that I can turn up and down. So you don't want to be listening to any Harry Styles. You don't want to listen to Kanye. You don't. There's a lot of reasons why you don't want to listen to Kanye. Travis Scott. You don't want to be listening to Eminem. You don't want to listen to Mac Miller. Your loudest female artist, and I take Harry Styles does not fit I, in on that list. I take so much issue with this. <laughs> I take so much issue with this list. Uh, your loudest female artists that would uh, be a distraction on the road. Miley, Rihanna, Ariana Grande, SZA, Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Olivia Rodrigo, Carol G, Nicki Minaj, and Doja Cat. Who do you want me to listen I don't, to? You can say a lot of things yeah. about Taylor Swift. I don't think I've ever heard some. I wouldn't. If you, if you asked somebody who is like the loudest artist out there. We have an entire Taylor Swift playlist. I don't. What do you want? I can't. Wow. I'm not going to not listen to it. This but is it, silly stuff. This is like when they're like. So, they, this this is, is what Camping World is spending their time doing is telling me who they think. And they're not even like. What about like people who don't like listen to this type of music? Yeah. Can I listen to this? Yeah. This Does that is, mean th that like Metallica is okay? This is like those lists like that come out that are like, uh, these are the, the 10 most livable cities in the country. And they, the way they figure them out is by like things like how far is it to walk to the nearest park and, you know, on average and, uh, how many different restaurants do they have? And like, none of that stuff really tells you the real story. Can we also just point out that um, a lot of these women are also on the most energetic female well, yeah, you would artist think list? Energetic so they're would energetic. also equate to loud, right? Their energetic <laughs> list is the list of people you should be listening to while driving. Yeah. And then their loudest list is the list of artists you shouldn't be listening and to while half driving. Half of them are on the same list. And they're on the same list. What they, is this? Exactly. What is this? Someone got paid to do this. Someone got paid to do this. Camping World's name is all over it. It is. They're it just is. trying to get, they're trying, what they're trying to get when they write something like this, they're trying to get placed in, they're trying to get placed in like newspapers. So this is the kind of thing that like morning radio shows pick yeah, up, right? Morning sure. radio shows will see an article like this and they will go through this for sure. That's what they're trying to get. Here. RV podcasters like yeah, us will we'll get this list and be like, they're crazy. what is wrong with but you? You know what? They world. don't care like, if we, get, they, they don't they care don't. if we say well, they're crazy. They're just trying to get their name out there I know. and success. And I just, they, they I'm, did it. <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed for them. I would be embarrassed for any, RV business that sent this to me and thought that this was something <laughs> like that they would want to attach their name to. Cause it's so full. It is literally Swiss cheese. This is a Swiss cheese press release. There are so many holes in it. It's so contradictory to tell me that I should listen to Taylor Swift because she's very energetic. And yet at the same time, you shouldn't listen to Taylor Swift because she's too loud. Boy, does You're that being too feel loud. <laughs> I know that one. I know it. <laughs> you need to calm down. Okay. You need to calm down camping world. Okay. <laughs> All right. What is in your fresh tank this week? Uh, my fresh tank is uh, if you are a mile marker member and you're going to listen to or watch the detour, that is the podcast after the podcast that we are about to do after this, my fresh tank goes to what we just got in the mail recently, which is our YouTube silver play button. So this and is what they give out when you get a hundred thousand subscribers, which we recently just passed on YouTube. So about a month ago. thank you so much for joining us for that. Yes. And we're going to open this up 
in the detour episode. We are. So a fresh tank to all of you, because this is obviously, we didn't just create 100,000 uh, Gmail accounts and then go and subscribe. <laughs> it's, it's one option. <laughs> well, there's only maybe 100. No, I'm just kidding. Which We didn't do any of that. Uh, but- we Just, all we have our own. We uh, on our I own. Mean, we have like twenty email addresses. So we do. We do. I don't think but the I kids are subscribed though. I don't think. I don't think my personal YouTube is actually subscribed to RV what? Miles, which is probably why. It's like I the first thing I did. Uh, I think I'm subscribed to the RV Miles podcast, mm. but I don't think I'm subscribed to our YouTube channel. I've I've a highly curated. Uh, YouTube yeah. algorithm. Yeah, you don't days. want any of that RV stuff Listen, in there. I don't want it messing in with my history tea time. Every, with every night, because so okay? we've got that. We've got the in my mammoth club. You know, we've got YouTube on our TV in our bedroom, uh-huh. and every now and then I'll watch something without changing over to my account, and no, 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 no. she will not be happy. Don't it like that. Messes up her algorithm. I do not want all of your camera and lighting equipment videos popping up in my algorithm, just like you don't want my history videos. I like history. I don't really you want do. the yoga videos, so <laughs> I don't. Don't I you don't come at that. Sarah Beth? She's amazing. So. So anywho, the my fresh tank this week is just um, to all of you for helping us make this milestone and to not make but reach this milestone of over 100,000 viewers on the RV Miles YouTube channel so that we have this uh, really cool silver play button now that YouTube sent to us, which we're going to unbox on Detour this week. And then we're going to find a place somewhere in this office once somewhere. we build out the set, which we've yeah. started. We've and so- started. Maybe someday we'll be celebrating that here on the RV Miles podcast YouTube channel. That would be cool. It'd be cool just to see that channel reach 10,000 subscribers. Um, You know, the bulk of our our meet and listeners is really the audio that's at the heart of this podcast is our audio audience. But it's been really great to see our video audience growing and to start see that community become just as vibrant as the audience community as well. So that is a big goal we have for 2024 is increasing both communities, both the audio and the visual for the podcast. And who knows, maybe one day the podcast will have one of these nifty little silver play buttons to hang up here in the studio as well. Who knows? All right, that's it for this week's episode of the RV Miles Podcast. Yes, it is. Thank you so much for joining us. And as mentioned, if you're interested in becoming a Mile Marker member and supporting what we're doing here at RV Miles and getting some pretty cool perks that go along with it, you can learn more at rvmiles.com slash mile markers. One of the perks that Mile Marker members get is that they get first dibs this year for homecoming. That's the event that we are hosting October 9th through the 13th in Amana, Iowa. We are very, very limited with tickets. I think we will only be able to, at most, have 80 campsites. Right now we're starting at 64, 80 campsites is the top. So Mile Marker members get first pick of those spots starting on April 1st, and then we open it up to the general public on April 15th. So if you wanna learn more about that and becoming a member, and so you can ensure that you can join us at homecoming in October, just head to rvmiles.com slash mile markers. But uh, until then, Please stay safe, stay healthy, and keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody. Bye.